Welcome back. All right, so I know I've been gone for quite a while now, and clearly a lot around here has changed. But today I just want to talk about my digital dashboard. Um, I will talk more about the changes that are coming to this channel soon. So if we're all cool with that, then let's begin. This is a custom digital dashboard that I put together myself, and it's definitely not the only one out there. I know there are plenty, but I think it's rare enough that you might be learning something new from this video. I think it's super cool to have one of these in a viewable area in the home because it just breaks everything down for you. Um, anything about your day or your upcoming schedule. And it's nice to be able to get all of that information just at a glance. All right, so let's dive right into the features of this dashboard, starting with the date and time in the top left corner. These elements are pretty big and they can be viewed on my display from pretty much anywhere in the home. This is also where you will find a list of upcoming events. It updates automatically from my Google Calendar using .ics files. Moving on to the right, we have the current weather followed by the weather forecast for the coming days. Usually I just ask Google for the weather. I have Google Homes set up throughout the house, but it's nice to have this information readily available too. In the bottom left corner, we have a grocery list. This is powered by Bring List, and it could be any list. I just decided to put groceries there because it's relevant. This display is right next to my kitchen. The cool thing about Bring List is that it has Google Assistant integration or Siri, so you can just talk to your voice assistant toss something into that list and it'll show up on the screen 15 minutes, give or take. Below that, we have a stock table. This just shows some financial information about some tickers that I'm following. I customized the CSS file for this module to match one of Weeble's color schemes because I think it looks better this way. Then on the right, we're keeping it simple. There's a QR code for the Wi-Fi. So this way, anytime I have a new guest over, all they have to do is scan the code on the screen and they can connect to the network just like that. They don't have to ask me for the password, which is also conveniently shown on the display in case they have to enter it themselves. At the very bottom, we have a news module, which shuffles through news headlines from RSS feeds. Right now I have it set to the maker Rasan, but if I wanted to, I can set it to an array of a number of different sources. You don't really get a whole lot from this module. Um, it's just the headline itself. So I feel like just keeping it at the maker Rasan uh, for me personally is enough. Then wrapping everything all together is the wallpaper module, which lies behind everything. This module is able to pull images from the Google Chromecast library, the Bing library, or your subreddit of choice. Lastly, I actually have another module, which you can't see right now. It's invisible most of the time, but if I take on my phone and start casting from YouTube, you will notice here that I have an option called Kitchen Dashboard. And this allows me to cast to a window inside this display. And this way I can watch this YouTube video in this window while retaining all of the information from my modules around it. How cool is that? Now in terms of hardware features, I can take the whole display with my hands and pull it back from the wall and this allows me to swivel it to a number of angles. So in a hypothetical scenario, I can throw up a cooking video on the display, take it out and swivel it to the kitchen side and that way I can follow along from the kitchen and have a good view of what I'm trying to make. Okay, so now that you know what you're in for, um, as promised in the title of this video, I'm going to go over how I put all of this together, starting with the prerequisites. Links to purchase everything will be down in the description below. First of all, you're going to need a computer capable of running Linux. In this case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. You're going to need a display. Here I'm using my old 43 inch TV, which used to be in the living room before I replaced it with a 55 inch. Preferably, this display should be VESA mount compatible. This way you can mount it if it's not, it's not really the end of the world. You can find another way to mount it, or you can just rest it up on a countertop somewhere. You're going to need a power source near your whole setup. This one is absolutely vital. As you can imagine, you need to power it somehow. Um, in my case, I actually did not have one nearby, so I had to put one in place. And I'm going to go over how I did that later. You're going to need a mount. I opted for a swivel mount, so this one comes out and swivels around. Uh, this one's also a lot easier to install. I've done a flat mount installation before, and those are they're really frustrating to work with. If you have to modify anything behind the TV, you have to take the whole display down, um, do your work on it, and then put it back up while keeping everything in place. With the swivel mounts, I can just take the whole thing, pull it out, and make the adjustments I need to, and push it back in. The only downside is it does take up a little bit more room, meaning that your display will protrude from the wall a little bit more than usual. But I'll let you be the judge of whether or not that's actually a problem in my scenario. And then you're going to need a few tools. Now you might be able to borrow these from friends if you don't have any yourself, but you're going to need a drill, a socket wrench, and a stud finder. This is all for installing the mount. 
In terms of the software, we're going to be running Raspberry OS on the Pi, and then we're going to install Node.js before pulling the Magic Mirror repository from GitHub. Now, because this is Linux, you will be expected to navigate through the command line terminal. But if you're not comfortable with that, you can skip that part and then just get Dackboard instead of Magic Mirror. Dackboard is a web interface dashboard, um, similar to what I have here, but not as versatile, um, but it's infinitely easier to set up. For the purposes of this video, we are going to be going for the Magic Mirror setup. Okay, now we've gotten all the prerequisites out of the way, let's start with the installation. First of all, addressing the power issue. I did not have a power socket nearby, so I had to put one in place. And in order to do that, there was this power socket further down the wall, uh, a few studs down, so I had to cut a big channel on the wall, drill a few holes, and pull some new Romex cable through. I pulled the Romex cable into a device box uh, with an outlet below where I wanted to mount the display. This way I could have more outlets below if I ever needed to use it. Now I could have stopped here and this is all I really had to do um, if I just wanted to mount my display on this location. But if I stopped here, then I would have a wire dangling down from the display when I mounted it. I didn't want that, I wanted something clean. So I branched upwards into another device box and put an outlet there behind where I intended to mount the display. This would be hidden by the display itself and it's going to look really clean when I'm done. Now this can be a lot of work. It took me the entire afternoon and it can be quite dangerous if you've never done it before. So if you're planning to put a new outlet somewhere around your new display, um, or doing any electric work in that manner, you should hire a professional. Once the power source was located and in place, I moved on to installing the mount. Now this is another step that you might have to call a professional to do, um, but I feel like this is a little more accessible to everyone else because it's not as dangerous as installing some new electrical work. I used a stud finder to find a stud behind the wall that was close to where I wanted to mount my display. The reason why you want to put the mount where a stud is and not just anywhere in the drywall is because you run the risk of your TV falling down or even ripping the entire wall with it. Studs are the wooden beams that run inside your walls and they will be able to hold your TV without any issue. Once it was located, I pre-drilled a couple of holes to make it easier for the leg bolts to go in, and then I installed those over the mounts. Now, I mentioned having a socket wrench earlier in this video. I don't really have a good socket wrench. I have this really long one that gives you a lot of torque, but I ended up using my impact driver, which worked fine. If everything went fine, just make sure that you measure a bunch of times to avoid making mistakes. Um, otherwise, you'll have to take down the whole assembly and put it back up, which I had to do. So don't make my mistakes. So once the mount was installed on the wall securely, um, I just took the included brackets, installed those on the back of my TV in a vertical configuration, took the whole thing and just tossed it up on my mount. Then I just leveled it using the included level system. Some mounts may require you to level it beforehand while you're installing the mount itself. Um, in my case, I could do it after the fact. Then it was time to work on the software on the Raspberry Pi. So first I actually started from my computer. I grabbed an image of Raspberry OS from their official website before flashing it to my SD card with Etcher. Once that was done, I took the SD card out and put it into my Raspberry Pi. At this point, if you want to continue the setup, you're going to need a keyboard at the very least. Here I'm using the Logitech K400 wireless mouse and keyboard combination. I find that it's the perfect media control device and if you're interested in purchasing one, I will leave a link down in the description below. I made sure to use a normally orientated display for this part of the setup. I really didn't want to use the vertically mounted one because that meant I would have to keep my head turned for the entirety of the setup, and that's not very practical. Continuing with the setup of Raspberry OS, I disabled underscan to remove those blackboards around the screen, connected to a Wi-Fi network, and made sure that my keyboard was set to the US layout. That way all the keys are exactly where I expect them to be. And it is at this point that if you don't have any intentions to customize your Pi further, you can just go to the Dackboard website through the Chromium web browser and then just make an account there, set everything up, and you'd be done. But we're here to get the most out of this setup. And to do that, we're going to install the Magic Mirror software. We're going to open up the terminal and install Node.js using these couple of lines. And then we'll clone the Magic Mirror repository from Mitch Mitch's GitHub. After that's been pulled, we will change directories into the Magic Mirror folder and run npm install to install the Magic Mirror software. Finally, to get everything up and running, we're going to make our configuration file from a copy of the sample config file. Then we'll run npm run start. This is what the Magic Mirror software looks like out of the box. You'll notice it's quite minimalistic in design, and it's intentional this way because this whole setup was meant to be put behind a one-way mirror, hence the name Magic Mirror. Although that's not what we're doing in this video, if you're interested in stuff like that, there are tons of videos here on YouTube covering DIY smart mirror projects. 
Um, but I'm actually going to be taking on a project like that further down the road. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you're subscribed. Now, you might notice that if we plug this into our vertically mounted display, everything would be sideways because the orientation is not set. So to do that, we're going to edit a configuration file under the folder slash boot. To do this, you can just navigate to that file using your file explorer and then edit it using the built-in text editor on Raspberry OS. I used Vim because I'm comfortable with it and I think it's faster. The configuration file for the Magic Mirror software is written in JavaScript, so you will be dealing with that, but it's really quite simple. And there's even documentation for it on the magicmirror.builders website, which I will link down below. And at this point, you're pretty much done. All that's really left to do is to configure your Magic Mirror software. And I'm not really gonna go over how I did my exact configuration because I think that everyone has different needs. So everyone's gonna have a slightly different configuration file, but I will put all my modules on the screen right here in case you need some ideas. Okay, got it. At any point here, you should tidy up the cables behind your display. Um, I actually mounted my Raspberry Pi to a plate that I 3D printed out with hot glue and then mounted that to the back of my TV using Velcro command strips. I could have just directly mounted the Pi to the back of my display using command strips, but I found this solution to be a little bit more elegant. And there we have it. So this is what the finished product looks like. It's very functional. I can see everything I need to at a glance. It's super clean in my opinion. It looks like it belongs there. My dashboard is located in a spot where I believe you can really see it from most angles of the house. And I feel like my guests are gonna be impressed when they come over and see this. And that's all I have to say about my digital dashboard. So I hope that you found this enjoyable, if not educational. Um, I will be talking more about the changes that are happening around here, as well as what I have in mind for the future of this channel. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure that you're subscribed. Leave a like down below if you found this enjoyable and I hope to see you soon.